Welcome to Speed Scene Live TV, the only show dedicated to the sportsman racer. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, Hedman Hustler Headers, m and Tires, and TheFolk.com. With your hosts, Diana Might, Bruce Barker, Scott Lucky Hudson, Alex Rogio, Bob Beck, Bryant Layton, with Donnie Couch, and Dar Hawthorne. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to Speed Scene Live. I am Bruce Barker, the sole surviving member of the cast. Well, I shouldn't say surviving, but actually everybody's out on assignment and, and, and wending their way back and forth uh, across the nation's highways, freeways, and byways, stuff like that. Lucky Hudson, for instance, just last uh, last weekend was at the NHRA Hot Rod Reunion. Diana might out on assignment tonight as well. And uh, let's see, let's make the head count, Dar. Hawthorne, Donnie Couch, Alex Rogio's testing that Dodge Magnum out on the track, so uh, she won't be joining us tonight. Remember a few weeks ago with a big hubbub, and by the way, the movie is still touring the country, Snake and Mongoose. Go see it if you can. Sooner or later, it's available on DVD, but by all means, it is a theater attendance if you can. A lot of independent theaters are showing it, and a lot of uh, theaters that are doing sort of premieres in some of the bigger cities. Anyway, keep an eye out for it uh, in your local town, uh, and hopefully you'll be able to see it in the theater. But at the big premiere at the Egyptian Theater in Hollywood, which is one of these big, fancy places that was built in like the 1910s or 20s when, you know, big ornate theaters with the gold gilt stuff everywhere. They were the big deal. Well, that's where a lot of movie premieres, uh, premieres still happen because, uh, you know, it's great to go back into sort of the, the heyday, the glory day of Hollywood and take a look at that. Well, anyway, um, Donnie Couch was on the red carpet interviewing, and we saw a whole bunch of of these interviews a couple of weeks ago, uh, interviews with racers, interviews with stars. Um, we wanted to get a th- uh, another couple taken care of on Speed Scene Live tonight that we didn't have time for. For instance, this for the familiar face, Donnie Couch with Linda Vaughn. <laughs> hey, Linda. What's Hi, going Donnie. on? You know, I don't think they could tell all the stories in this movie, could they? Well, of course not. I mean, we have secrets because, you know, I knew a lot was going on with Tom and the, and the snake because uh, we built a lot of parts for the cars and we had clutch parts that other people didn't get. So I have some secrets. I was thinking of the other stories. Of course you are, but I don't believe in those other stories because I'm still single. Nice. <laughs> Linda Vaughn, enjoy the snake and the mongoose movie. Hey, shift my gears right out of here. <laughs> we love you, Linda. Thanks love for you, being on Speed Scene. Thank you, Speed Scene. Oh, that's great stuff. And uh, whether or not you recall, you'd have to look way back in the YouTube archives for this, but a couple of years ago, Linda Vaughn was actually on Speed Scene Live as uh, as an in-studio guest, and that was a load of fun. Now, one of the other celebrities, much more sort of in the racing scene, not so, not so much for the equipment side, but as a driver would be this gentleman, Ron Caps. Unbelievable to have Cruz Petragon here at the premiere. <laughs> oh, it's Ron Caps. Ron, you had a part in a movie, huh? That was a low blow. Oh, no, come on. <laughs> we got to break the ice a little. You yeah, know? you yeah. look a little stiff out there. Look I, at him, been, all dressed up. It, it, We're used to you in a dirty fire suit and the body blowing off. And it is Versace. Uh, my underwear is Versace. Oh, we too much information, no, it but is. it's a family-rated show all here right, tonight. All right, all so right. let's keep it clean. But it is you know, Calvin Klein. You should have been carrying that Wally from the last race, my friend. That was an impressive win after that, that was the a week before having trouble. But you know how hard it is to win, and, and it's even tougher to to, uh, to have a weekend like we did in Sonoma, win, and then come back to NQ at Seattle, but bounce back and win Brainerd. We're, we're just trying to get into the countdown strong and uh, and get ready for it. And, you know how it is, man. It, it, every you don't know if every win is going to be your last win, and so I'm just taking it, enjoying it, and uh, hopefully we can carry this into Indy. Well, we're enjoying tonight the snake and the mongoose, and you and I. I certainly got was raised around them. I know you were, and they were our heroes. Now I never thought we'd be on the red carpet with them here in Egyptian Theater, 90 year old theater no, in I mean, Hollywood. To look over and see Goose, he actually dressed up a little bit tonight. Uh, a little. A little. Is the key word. But, I mean, these guys, you know, I, you got to work around them for a long time before I did, but I got to drive for the snake for almost a decade. Never thought I'd even have a chance to, to really meet him as an adult. I mean, he yelled at me when I tried to get his autograph when I was six years old at a at the uh, Rancho Bakersfield, of all places. So <laughs> He yelled at us all, so yeah. don't take offense to it. So And then later on to be able to work with a guy, and he kind of became a father to me on and off the track. Um, he's just, you know, it's a dream come true. So to, to be a part of this movie, which, you know, you and I, played with the Hot Wheels Hot Wheel when we were kids. Uh, 
uh, it's a great story, and I'm just glad to be in it. All right, folks, that's Ron Katz. Ron, enjoy the movie, and good luck out there on the trail. Thanks, Donnie. Appreciate it. Hey, look, we got a show to jump into. Uh, that would be the 19th of February 2013. Let me give you the guest rundown again. Tara Wendland, Tommy Phillips, Jason Voss, Jeff Aran, Paula Murphy. I think we squeezed them all in. By the way, there's also a look, uh, if I've got all the, the notes and correct in front of me, electric cars, the race vehicle of the future. Eh, we're going to find out. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, they started shooting a show out at Irwindale called One and Done, a new TV show. And uh, hey, there's my buddy uh, Mike Blodgett racing in mm -hmm. Supergas. A, uh, uh, One and Done is a new show filming at Irwindale, and uh, they're going to film it again this Thursday. So come on out. I'm going to be out there. And if you come on out, maybe, just maybe, you might get picked to be on the show. So come on out. Cheer me on. I'm going to try to get on the show, too, in my Curry rear ends. Headman Hustler Nova. I'm going to be showing off my new whole shot wheels and uh hey mo wilson will have his badass nova out there too yeah i don't think a, a whole lot of people yet have seen your new paint job either right no no and actually it hasn't been uh, out of the shop out of the trailer out of the, the driveway until this thursday man that baby's gonna rock hey march meets coming up like next month at famoso march 7th through the 10th you can buy your spectator tickets online right now all you do is you go to the same place where you can hook up with us in terms of you know the instant messaging the uh, join the crew and as well when we give all that cool stuff away, which we seem to do so often, at thefoat.com. That's where you get those spectator tickets, thefoat.com. And uh, by the way, stop by, see us in the Curry Rear Ends Hedman Hustler Headers booth. Check out the new whole shot wheels on that Nova, too. I know you just mentioned that, Lucky, but you know, we had video a couple of weeks ago as you were putting on the, uh, what do you call it? It's the, the two-piece. The Oh, man, they look get me great. Some. They really make the car pop. Nice. Hey, coming up tonight, one of the best super gas and super comp racers in the world, Tommy Phillips. Also a go-fast young lady named Tara Wedland is going to be in the studio. Wendland, I want to make sure I got that right. Just say it fast. That's what she told me. <laughs> All right, Tara Wendland. Hey, I did it. Also, some guys have done some electric car races. You're going to see this video. It's pretty crazy tonight. We're trying to build, they're trying to build a 200-mile-an-hour electric Indy car. So that's all coming up tonight as well. Hey, uh, Bruce, you know, I think uh, Lucky's been moonlighting. Every Monday night he's on that Sam Oxer Jr. radio show. That's right, like uh, last night, huh? Yeah, well, Diana Might was on last night. He wants me to come on next Monday night, but I just want to know, does it pay the same as this show does? <laughs> Every bit. <laughs> yes, it's Good. a sliding scale. Good, I'm in there then. Yeah, his scale's been sliding for years. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot, Lucky. You didn't explain that part to me. Oh, <laughs> to boy. talk to my agent. The bumps and bruises in showbiz. Is, yep. Oh, man. Well, that's very cool. So Diana might, I think, was a guest last night on the show. Lucky is a co-host. That's right. I'm on each and every week, so check me out Monday nights, and uh, that's out of Washington, D.C., so I'm an uh, East Coast, West Coast kind of guy. East Coast, mm, West Coast, East Coast, baby. Speaking of West Coast, how you doing? I was at the West Coast Winter Nationals. I'm Bob Beck, and you've got gas here on Speed Scene Live every Tuesday night. But at the Winter Nationals, hey, we were talking to some of the best drivers in f top fuel and funny car. Dude, are you going to tell us about that tonight? I am. I'm going to tell you about it, show you some pictures about the guys, and some of the great stuff inside the NHRA Museum. Whew. Okay, nice. Bryant Layton awesome. is out on assignment tonight. Normally, he delivers the PRP seats and belts off a report, so uh, he'll be back soon, you know, after he wipes the dust off and gets those lens cleaners working and uh, stuff like that. And our 7.0 Pro expert, Tara Winland, is here. Welcome her to the show. Hi, I'm Tara Winland, driver of the Walden Power Equipment Front Engine Dragster. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Tara, it's great to have you on the show, and if you're not only well-known as a racer driving that dragster, but you're also well-known as a one of the uh, country's best photographers, I hear, with Max Cat Cackle Photography or Max Cackle Photo? Yes, Max Cackle Photos. You can visit our website at www.maxcacklephotos.com. Cackle, not crackle, like <laughs> Cackle Fest. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we do about 60 um, drag racing events all across the country. We're very lucky. We get to travel the world. We're going to the March meet. Um, we go to really cool events like the Boise Night Fire Nationals and Cordova World Series and the Reunion. So very lucky well but we're going to get into a little bit of that and we're going to show more of this footage but before we do donnie couch was at the nhr well you know what i better not jump on that too soon because if we uh, play ron caps 
too soon. Oh, that's right. No, don't play cat. We'll yeah, mess up. I we'll know. mess up. We'll have a big problem. There'll we be legal will. stuff involved. But Donnie was out at the NHRA Winter Nationals. Donnie, what would you think of the race out there? Well, it was a fun weekend. Of course, we're rooting for our uh, buddy that's been on the show here, Ron Caps. He got to the runner-up position, struggled early on, but really poured it on during eliminations. Did a nice interview in preparation for the March meet at Bakersfield. So uh, we had a fun time with the exception of our camera crew. So sound guy <laughs> bailed on me. Yeah, the camera yeah. guy failed. We lost a battery. Uh, I heard. You know, we looked like the Three Stooges, but hey, we got it done. <laughs> now, I know I made a lot of mistakes, but I pulled it off because I acted like nothing was going wrong. I just kept filming with that dead camera. Just kept pointing it at Ron Caps. Yeah. You know, that's that's <laughs> half the battle right there, is making you look like you know what you're doing and yeah. everything's fine. Half the battle. So, uh, we got a lot going on. Bruce, let's get into our first commercial break and that way we can get the commercials out of the way. We're going to be talking to a lot of people tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun. So, let's open up some real estate so we can crowd everything in and pack it in. What do you think, Tara? Does that sound good? Sounds great. Nice. Speed Zine Live. Keep it here. For over half a century, Curry rear-end components have been twisting out the torque and taking the punishment. And the new Curry lineup is stronger than ever. Some of the world's most capable, hardest-working vehicles depend on Curry gears, which is why you can too. Street cars, hot rods and resto rods, drag cars, rock-crawling four-wheel drive vehicles, whatever you're piloting, Curry expertise and rock-solid design means the parts will do their job so you can do yours. Check out Curry's custom rear ends, featuring a full line of upgrades, components, and installation options. The Curry Crate Rear Ends lineup offers ultra-strong construction on third members and carrier assemblies. And other underside parts, like correct link steering systems, keep your four-wheeler pointed where you want it. Add in a wide variety of solid, purpose-built suspension and brake components, and you've got one tough, ready-to-go machine. Grab a hold of a Curry Rear End. Talk to the experts at 714-367-2679 or view the complete line online at curryenterprises.com. Drag Racing TV Show, brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, and TheFoat.com. Welcome back to Speed Scene Live. I would be the Bruce Barker guy that I'm talking about right now. See what I did there? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. good. <laughs> that's hot, good. There's Hot Rod Bob in the studio. And as well, Lucky Hudson, of course, tonight. Diana Might is off on assignment tonight. But uh, look at that. Cigar in hand is Donnie Couch, who corrected me just moments ago for what I uh, what I almost uh, used your last name for, which was missing a letter. So, uh, Well, you guys, I just came from the Winter Nationals. I thought I'd come here for a break. You guys are wearing me out. Uh, so we're wearing us out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Tara Wendland's in the studio tonight. We're going to talk cars, fast cars, and more cars. Now, Tara, Bruce is going to pull up a video pretty soon, but tell us a little bit about your car. I was at the uh, uh, NHRA reunion at Bowling Green, and you won that event. Yes. Uh, that was definitely the highlight of our year last year. Um, I We went to that race uh, two years before that as photographers, and the first time I ever went to Bowling Green, uh, I fell in love with the track, the covered grandstands and everything. And to be able to race there was just so amazing. We qualified number one at, uh, with a 735 at 180, um, which was super awesome. Um, yeah, that car. Yeah, this right is the other car. This is a uh, another car that you've driven before, and this is is this at Denton right here? Yes, that's at Denton, uh, North Star Dragway. We. How about that? I recognize the track and the drivers. <laughs> Very position. nice. Man. Awesome. Um. Yeah, we. 
This year we're going to be racing with a new group that just started in the Southwest called the Southwest Heritage Racing Association. You can visit the website at shraracing.com. Um, Didn't you race with another group before and now they've kind of transitioned merged. into this yeah. group? Mm-hmm. And what is it about this group that you find so attractive? Um, it's all nostalgia dragsters, altered. Um, it's a really great group of people. Um, there's also a group down there, the Outlaw Few Altered, another great group of people that we run with. Isn't the Outlaw Few Altered the group that uh, Rich Howe and his yes. Power Play Fuel Altered races at? Yeah, they usually get about 20 cars per event. Um, very, very cool. You can visit their website at OFAA.net. I've met a lot of the people out there. Uh, uh, Marriott's are the ones in charge. Uh, but I think one of my favorite racers was a guy named Doodad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doodad, yeah. he, uh, you can you can pick him out of a crowd, that's for sure. He's always wearing overalls and has a cigar, kind of like Donnie over well, there. Well, <laughs> hey, you talking about Rich Howe, the guy that wouldn't drive up to the show because there was too much traffic tonight? Is, is that the same Rich Howe? Is, I, didn't, I don't know. Oh, I, I just Thanks, kept thinking Rich. he was going to show up. Thanks anyway. a lot, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Well, listen, Tara, we're going to talk to you a little bit more, but you, you're from Texas, right? Yes. You're, you're one of those beautiful Texas raised. girls <laughs> that everyone talks about. Well, we have another Texan on the line right here. We've got a gentleman by the name of Tommy Phillips. Also from Texas, and uh, Tommy, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, thanks for having me on again. Uh, enjoy visiting with you guys. Well, you've, we've had you on the show uh, before, and it was always a pleasure. I got a chance to actually meet you face to face out of Pomona this time. Yeah, I uh, had a good time there uh, um, chatting with you, and uh, I love going out there. We couldn't have better weather this year, that's for sure. Well, I got a, you know, you're in the studio with everybody. We got a young lady by the name of Tara Wenlin that who you might be familiar with. Uh, absolutely, yes, yes. Local here, um, um, know, know her well. <laughs> Hi, Tommy. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Uh, I'm excellent. I'm back in Texas now, but uh, um, I enjoyed the weather while I was out there. Well, you had a good time out here. Uh, now, I know you went out a little early in the, uh, I think, in the Super Comp car. How'd you do in the Super Gas car? Well, we ended up losing in the quarterfinals at five cars. Had a little trouble getting down the racetrack and uh, uh, missed, missed the wall a foot or so. That's not oh. much fun in our kind of racing, but uh, that's okay. We uh, saved everything, and uh, we'll be in Phoenix next week. Well, I got a question from a racer right here on my crew updates from thefoat.com, and he says, uh, what was the track temp at the end of the day on Sunday? I seen him in another car lose traction. Uh, the track temperature for most of the weekend uh, was in the lower 70s. Um, it did get around uh, 80 degrees or so some during the day, uh, but when, when that particular thing happened it was about 72 or 73 degrees and uh um the the, the track was really pretty good most of the time it's just uh, unfortunately we ran right after the pros there and uh, you know they get a lot of clutch dust and uh, debris from their cars and uh they swept it off cleaned it off best they could and just uh, didn't quite get it done this time and uh, it happens once in a while it's not much fun but that's part of the deal are you saying that the pro cars messed up the track for everyone else you know i've i donnie Wait, I, i've never heard that this guy yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be in Phoenix. I'll need to look him up. Yeah. Right? Just look for the guy in the golf cart with a cigar. He'll be there. Yeah. Well, well, Tommy, I know that uh, you're racing under the K&N Filters banner, but tell us a little bit about your sponsors and everybody that's involved with your team. Well, uh, again, our major sponsors are K&N uh, Filters, which obviously you're familiar with. They're right there in Riverside. And uh, and anyone in motorsports knows what uh, pretty much who they are. And uh, uh, CBS Arc Safe is 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 really my major sponsor and has been for uh, this is their fourth year with me and uh, they build uh, heavy duty racking equipment for just huge circuit breakers for in the oil field and school districts and cities and and uh, craziness like that. In fact, we had about uh, eight of those people, customers, vendors, employees out there this weekend and uh, to enjoy the event there in Pomona. So uh, that's that there uh, that's what they do. They've been involved with my race program for about 20 years actually but the last four years of uh, they've been major sponsors and uh, couldn't do it without them and of course we have all the, the manufacturer sponsors that have been great to me through the years and you know lucas oil products and hoosier racing tire and Hughes performance and sunset racecraft and they've just uh, i've been lucky enough through the years to uh 
to be involved with some uh, cutting edge type people that have been very loyal to me and vice versa and it's been good for my program uh, uh, for sure we do have a couple of new uh, sponsors this year since i talked to you and uh, uh, jegs came aboard with us we've been working together now for a couple of years on on uh, different stuff we built them a car at uh, my shop here uh, a couple of years ago and uh, so they came on board as a uh, an associate sponsor and uh, and my old company tnt supercars the, the people who build those dragsters that we drive or that i drive um they uh, the 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 company that bought them, uh, we got back together and did some stuff uh, this year, and so they're back on board as a major sponsor, and uh, so that's kind of nice. Wait a minute. Since we talked, I just talked to you 48 hours ago. <laughs> you lined up <laughs> well, these sponsors since, since then? Since I've been on the show, anyway, I guess. Okay, okay. That, that makes more sense. Uh, you know, I just saw you the other day. I mean, uh, you got to sleep sometime. <laughs> hey, man, you, can't, you know, in the fast world of racing, you can't uh, you gotta sleep a, a minimum amount of time. Somebody pass you by, you know what I mean? That's right. And, I mean, you've raced, you've gone back to Texas, you've picked up more sponsors, uh, you've done it all in no time at all. Now, I know you're a hardcore racer. In fact, we had a conversation about the, that's really the core of your personality. You are a hardcore guy, and that's really what you like. Are you happy with your performance so far this year? I know you had a great year last year, so what do you think of yourself so far? Um, well, I'm very happy with the cars. Um, a lot of new stuff for the, to start the year and didn't get to test at home due to the weather, so I was very happy with the cars. Um, you know, uh, I'm my own harsh critic, so uh, I, I would say I would say my driver's the weak link at the moment, but uh, I, I had good enough cars to win that race and uh, and uh, drove pretty well, just didn't didn't have the luck there right at the end, but that's okay. Um, as long as you have good cars and you're driving pretty well, you'll, you'll be fine in the end, so I'm well, while I, I guess I would like to win every uh, race I go to, we know that's not going to happen. So, uh, I, I, all in all, I, I'm happy and looking forward to Phoenix. Uh, I think our chances are pretty good there. Tommy, you had a drive through a big field in both classes, though, didn't you? Uh, yes, um, 80 plus super comp cars and a little over 70 super gas cars, I believe. Yeah, so getting to the quarterfinals in super gas, that's a heck of a job. That's driving. really good. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, like I said, you know, we, we, we I hold myself to a pretty high standard. And at the end of the day, it's about winning. It's not about getting close. And uh, so, you know, uh, to say I was thrilled, no. Um, but I was happy, I was very happy with the cars and, uh, and you know, for being off for two or three months. I uh, drove pretty well, pretty happy with that. And uh, like I said, I think we'll do, we'll, uh, do well going forward, uh, that's what I expect anyway. Well, Tommy, thanks for calling. It's great to hear from you. It's a real pleasure to meet you in person, and uh, I'm glad I got a chance to meet you. So uh, we'll keep an eye on you and, and call in later in the year and keep us updated. Absolutely, we'll do. And maybe we come back out. Uh, I'll definitely be in Pomona for the finals, uh, regardless of uh, how good or bad a year I have. And I may have come by and be in studio. That's uh, be a good time. And uh, glad you got to have Tara on, and uh, good luck with uh, their program as well. Thank you. Talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, well, you know what, Tara, he's a, a fellow Texan, and I was talking to him a little bit about the Outlaw Fuel Alters at, at Denton, the North Star Track, and uh, he was really familiar with the whole program. He says he goes down there and watches those fuel alters. Yeah, it's quite a show, um, especially the nitro cars. Like I said, they have about 20 cars um, each race, and it is really one heck of a show. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the Ron Caps interview in just a minute. Uh, yeah, but before we do, Donnie, set up the weekend a little bit. I know you're out at the Winter Nationals all weekend. You were there when, of course, Antron had that horrific crash. And a uh, lot of top fuel cars running capsules now. New deal. Well, uh, mostly the Schumacher camp, but, uh, you know, John Force, you know, it's his daughter's uh, debut in Top Fuel, so he wanted her to have a canopy. Actually, the things, the true test is, you know, they're in an accident. That's how they really drill down and, and see if they work. I've worked with these uh, when I had a Top Alcohol Hydro, and uh, we lost one of our drivers, Tim Capaldi, and I worked with the uh, capsule crew there trying to develop that whole deal. It's really nice to see them in Top Fuel, you know.
You know, they seal up good. They have driver air. They have fire extinguishers, uh, which top fuel guys never had before. You know, funny cars have to have them. But, uh, you know, it's going to be the trend for all the other teams coming up. But, you know, we had a good time. You know, Antron was okay. It was a terrific accident, and we feel bad for him. But they'll be back at Phoenix. They had a spare car ready to go. But, you know, it was just a fun weekend talking to all the guys like Ron Caps and Jeff Arend and Dale Worsham that are going to be at the March meet racing with us. So that's what they're – they were buzzing about that, even though it was the start of the uh, Mellow Yellow Winter Nationals or the whole season there. Everybody was buzzing about the March meet, so it was really fun. Well, let's catch. Let's check in with Ron right now. Hey, Donnie Couch here on assignment for Speed Scene Live. We're at the beginning race of the season for the NHRA Mellow Yellow Championship 2013. I'm here with one of the most popular drivers out here, Ron Caps. Ron, how you doing today? I'm good, but this Donnie Couch on assignment thing is kind of funny. I don't know. If- Am I supposed to keep a straight face with that? Hey, wait a minute. I'm like Ed McCullough. I'll knock you on your <laughs> ass. Right? And what's our saying about Ed McCullough? Don't be a victim. Hey, Ron, uh, you know, we have a lot of fans out there. Of course, you've been on the show a couple times. We appreciate it. But it was real disappointing last year missing the championship by two two points. Uh, I know we all felt bad, and I know it had to be a long winter for you. Yeah, you know, you know you've been in this business longer than I have, and it... it you got to be hot at the right time, especially the the countdown that we have, and you have to be good throughout those six races. And um, it's it's cool. Jack Beckman got a championship. I'm glad we kept it in house, but uh, losing by two points, man, it's it's like kissing your sister. Well, we all know that uh, Ron, or Ron Tobler's his crew chief was Jack Beckman's crew chief. They did a change. Ron's had uh, a bunch of different uh, crew chiefs in the works. Been doing good. Of course, our hero Ed McCullough. We can't count him out. But now I think things are settling down. Ron's real methodical. He's one of the best in the business. And we also know that he kind of babysits, and these crew chiefs all work together on your team. Yeah, and he's got great people under him. We got the same guys coming back, and you know it's funny. Everybody talks about the change that. Don Schumacher made last year, um, and, uh, and it was at first it was whoa me Jack Beckman he got his crew chief taken away, and and, and I understand how that felt, but you got to remember also that my crew guys at the time had been with me since we were the brute car, so we got eight years of me as my crew guys are like family. Same with Jack and his crew guys, and then I had Tim Richards the general, you know that just got up and retired right there on the spot at the Vegas race, so. It was cool that we had the ability to move people around, but Jack ended up beating us for the championship with Todd. So um, it was while it was tough, and I felt bad for Jack. You know, I, I I was happy for the guys that used to be my crew guys over there, but you know we spend more time on the road than we do at home, and so our guys on the road are our family. So it uh, it made it tough at first, but uh, I've grown accustomed to uh, to having crew chiefs kind of moved around, I guess. Well, you know, I know that you don't take much time off, even when you're not racing the uh, NHRA trail, because you see in sprint cars, modifieds, nostalgia, funny cars, I think anything with wheels we've seen you in. But recently, I turned in and was watching the Super Bowl, and you're on the sidelines running the uh, soundy floor. What is the name of that equipment you were handling? Well, I had to look it up. It's a parabolic microphone, and it's those dishes that, you know, you get a microphone. It's the one that actually you can hear the audibleizing by the quarterback, and what was cool was being on the sideline of a huge game like that as a Niner fan was awesome, but I could hear the, the linemen talking crap to each other and really talking smack, and it's amazing what they pick up, but it's not an easy job, man. You're running around holding that thing trying to get the best sound you can, but what a what an experience of a lifetime, man. Well, we're seeing what were the odds. Everybody bets on the game. We're betting to see if you're going to get run over by a linebacker or something. But, hey, how about we bring that out here and we tone in on the smack talk from the crew members uh, or maybe you guys are, we can snoop around with these crew chiefs, see what's going on with them. Yeah, it's funny. NHRA, you know, they want to, they want to, they want to mix it up and gain some some new fans by getting things, you know, a little more excitement. But as soon as you do something, um, you get in trouble out here. So it's a fine line you got to walk with NHRA. We're so corporate out here with sponsors like Napa that you have to watch what you do every minute of the day. But um, if you could hear some of the, you've heard it, but if you could hear some of the smack talk going on out here, it'd be pretty funny. Of course, we're all excited for the March meet coming up in Bakersfield, California. Rob, we understand you're going to drive for Steve Pluger up there. I know you have a real strong passion for these nostalgic cars. I do, and I can remember going with with uh, 
Well, I can remember going when Soapy Sales car was out there. It was one of the only really nostalgia funny cars when they had the front motor cars that you guys were doing. And everybody was trying to kick this, this nostalgia funny car thing off. And, uh, of course, my buddy Jeff Gaynor got me into one of his cars, and I was hooked. In fact, it was one of the... the uh, the NHRA nostalgia races we ran here at Pomona, and I drove his car and pulled, detuned it. And what an experience that was to drive a 70 Cuda body nostalgia funny car with Dale Poldy, you know, pointing at me through the windshield. That was pretty cool. Um, but you know what? We're here at the Winter Nationals, and my mind is already at the March speed. I love racing nostalgia cars. I love the people, the racers. I love. I just. I love getting up there. Some people think that smell up at Famosa is a is a petri. Uh, terrible smell of those, you know, the, the orange peelings over there. But to me, that brings my childhood back. I mean, I love that smell when you roll into Famosa. Of course, you drove Dale Worsham's car up there. We got Chad Head coming out. And, uh, you know, he had a bad accident up there with Jeff Gaynor's car. <laughs> hey, let me ask you, what does Schumacher say about you driving all this stuff? Is I mean, there's got to be a risk here. You know, most popular driver out here. Yeah, what's he say about that? When he hired me, we went to corporate headquarters at Napa, and he told them that I love to go race other stuff, and they love that. There's a there's a there's a risk of getting hurt, but um, I'm usually pretty good about choosing what I do. Gainer's car, I wasn't sure I was the smartest guy at one point, but there's nothing like running good with a car put together by Jeff Gainer. And it was a blast. And Steve Pluger, we set the record with that car, and I get to drive the LA Hooker again this year, and I can't wait. Well, Ron, it's been a pleasure. We wish you good luck here at the Winter National. Look forward to seeing you at the March meetup in Pomosa. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, man, always good to talk to Ron Caps. Boy, nice job there, Donnie Couch yeah. on camera. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Tara, you've been to the March meet before, haven't you? Yes, last year was my first year. Um, I, it's just really un- indescribable, the March meet. Um, nitro everywhere. <laughs> um, it. You know, it's the coolest race that we go to the entire year. Now, you're sure. going as a photographer, not as a racer. Yes, we'll be shooting for competitionplus.com. Uh, be sure to check out photos there. Um, nice, nice. So you get some photos of Donnie. He'll be out there. Uh, well, I'm not really sure what he's, <laughs> what he's doing. Yeah, well, he's going to be trying to light his cigar with the yeah. nitro flies. I'll be in the announcer's booth. You know, yes, you, I know when I'm out. Bob's best friend, Mike English. Or you yeah. can come by the Curry Rear Ends Headman <laughs> Hustler booth, and maybe yeah. Donnie will sign some autographs. Donna, you got a, uh, somebody on the line here? Hey, we got John Hale here. You know, he was a champion in the Nostalgia Funny Car deal. Nice. And, uh, you know, he's been a guest on the show. Well, last time we had him call in, he was uh, en route to uh, Bakersfield, the reunion. He pulled over, you know, on the side of the road at, at a rest area, because that's where they were, him and Guy Tipton, and phoned in. So, hey, John, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me back, Donnie. It's great to be here. Well, I know it's been a, a long winter, and you're anxious to get out there and uh, run that hot rod again. Has Guy Tipton got that thing together? Yeah, we're ready to go, man. And uh, not qualifying at the reunion uh, made it a, a really long winter for us. We're ready to get back out there and, and redeem ourselves and uh, and uh, qualify well, get in the show, and uh, and I want to win that race. I want to walk away from there with the Wally and uh, start the year off right. Well, I wasn't even going to bring that part of it up. I know it was a, a rough deal for you because you had the chances of winning that championship there. And, uh, you know, not qualifying stuff, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of cars out there. It could happen to anybody. But, you know, you got a first-class operation, and you're good with the fans. And, uh, you know, the car runs well all the time. Tribute to Guy Tipton, my buddy. But I know you're busy with airplanes and flying around and going to concerts and, you know, carrying on. So I know you're ready to settle down and get back in that driver's seat. Hey, John, uh, we've got one of the country's best photographers here. Uh, Tara Winland will be out there taking pictures. So uh, you might want to invite her into your pits, let her know that uh, you want a little bit of that high-profile publicity. Well, believe it or not, Tara's like family uh, to, to me and, and Karen. Uh, her fiance, uh, Chris Graves, another uh, well-known photographer. Uh, he's like my little brother, and uh, uh, we see them regularly. In, in fact, uh, we sat with them at the Winter Nationals on Saturday. So uh, uh, Tara and I are, are great friends, and I can't say enough uh, about her and, and her uh, recent success driving. 
Hey, John, uh, we appreciate you calling in the show. We know you're awful busy, and we're looking forward to seeing you up there at the March meet. Thanks for having me back, Donnie. It's always a pleasure. Okay. Well, good luck up there. Thank you. Well, how about that? You didn't get a word in. Why? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Donnie, was, <laughs> you talked over Port Terrace. You wanted to say hello to John. You know? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's vicious here, Terry. You got to just, you know, what I usually do. Time. What I do is elbow. elbow. I do a little elbow, maybe a kick in the ankles, and and you know you'll get it next time. Just <laughs> shove the cigar down his mouth. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Ouch. well, that wouldn't be nice. Well, it depends on how far it goes. <laughs> now, sp- <laughs> speaking of being rough and tumble, we've got the manly and sophisticated Hot Rod Bob Beck and Bob. Tell us a little bit about your weekend. Well, you know, I spent the weekend in the, at the uh, Winter Nationals as well, but I had a different focus than Donnie did. I was actually working. But uh, I also worked for the NHRA, and I was the MC of the... Hi there, Donnie. Of the Night of Champions at the NHRA Museum. And if you've never been to the NHRA Museum, that is a place you've got to put on your schedule. And when you come out to a race, whether it's the Winter Nationals or the Finals, you get into the museum free. But we had a night with all the drivers, or not all the drivers, but we had a few drivers out there. We had Clay Milligan, Tony Pedragon. Now, Cruz was supposed to be there, but they had a little problem with an explosion in Tony's car. Whoops. Separating the body in half. We also had Brandon Bernstein from the Mav TV Lucas Oil Top Fuel car. Your friend Ron Cap, Snap a car. He was there sitting right alongside Fast Jack Beckman, the 2012 Funny Car Champ. You can see him up there. So we had a great talk with these guys. It took about an hour hour and a half. We discussed strategy, where they've been, where they're going to be, their favorite tracks. Ron talked about the uh, the aroma at uh, the March meet, (laughs) and I I told him that's Bandini Mountain, and do not swat the flies. They explode. Oh, so I see you're using still photography. Still, yeah, I still use (laughs) photography. That's correct. And... um, (laughs) <laughs> Jack Beckman, they're standing alongside me. The two ladies you saw before, if you remember the old chicken coop and drag cartoons, Pete Millar. Well, that's his daughter and his lovely wife. They are still promoting and bringing out the Pete Millar artwork for you. That was great stuff, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's so good. And she's still reproducing the magazine, and they have all his old artwork. Now, once you go through the museum, when you're not talking to the drivers like I got to do, you get a look at some of these great cars. Now, you see that yellow roaster in the background. That's Dean. Moon's old 34 Roadster. Hmm. Now, he got that from uh, Lee Gray, who uh, ends up being a relative of my lady. So uh, What? Yeah, and it's a, it's a strange well, how story. How come she was, didn't get the car? Well, she was too young to realize what it was oh, at the okay. time. All right. But uh, there are some great cars. There are indie cars. There are hot rods. There are dragsters. There are funny cars. Here's an old uh, Saxon Martin car, one of the stock eliminator machines. Hey, I think that might have been either Appliance or Keystone Classic. We, no, it's Those Keystones, Keystones no, man. Yeah, Keystones. Dude. Yeah, and you know, here's a funny car with Parnelli Jones funny car. You always think of Parnelli Jones turning right and left. Well, everyone got involved with drag racing, and here's uh, his Mustang funny car. This is one of the cars that's credited as being one of the first, what they called, dragsters at the time. This was the Bug, and it was a flathead powered frame with a cowl and a steering wheel. Holy cow. But that's what, you know, here's, you know, to show you where drag racing has come from and what it's gone to. This car probably hit the hair raising speed of 80 <laughs> miles an hour. Um, <laughs> back at the time, that was one of the quickest cars out there. Well, it looks fun. nice and safe, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, only, yeah. As long as you keep it rubber side down, it's fine. Well, it's funny, too. You could put a funny car body on this and sort of get away with it, but... Uh, yeah, it'd probably go. slow it down about yeah. 20 miles an hour, though. I mean, you know, that's a flathead Ford. That's a, that's a lawnmower <laughs> engine with eight cylinders. Hey, this is some sort of crazy custom Corvette, I guess. Yeah, it was one of the early fun cars. That that was a friend of mine, Mike Mitchell, from San Francisco, California. A dear friend of mine. Of course, he's not with us any longer. Now, uh, wasn't that the world's fastest hippie? That's it. It had the hookah pipe painted on the front and in Peach Nixon on the back. And yeah, Peach what? Nixon. Yeah. yeah, he had it on the back. Hey, Bob, I got yeah. a question. Yeah. I noticed Tony Petragon yes. was at the uh, interview that night. Yes, he was. He said Cruz missed it. Yeah, Tony's well, car is the one that blew up. Uh, Cruz was the one putting it back together. 
Yeah, well, uh, they they didn't hurt the chassis. They both made it to uh, their rounds of eliminations. They didn't do quite so well. But uh, Tony was really upset, and, and uh, I hadn't seen his round. I had just gone back over to the museum, and we didn't know that the car had blown it was, until after he got there. I was in the stands out there right where it blew. It was horrendous. Oh, yeah, man. There are pictures of that, and we got to talking about that later on after uh, the interviews, and it's a matter of, uh, you know, Steve Gibbs was saying, what do we do? We, we're running bombs down the track, and something's got to happen. They initially put that burst plate in the front of the bodies to try and relieve that pressure, didn't they? And that's not yeah, working. Yeah, with the amount of fuel that's running through those yeah. things, I mean, it's a bomb. If anything misfires yeah. or breaks, that's going to happen in yeah, those cars. And, and the bodies are flying up 150, 200 feet. Yeah. Pretty soon it's got to be a concern with NHRA. You know, we've been lucky so far. They haven't hit any of the spectators. Yeah, They've gone true. on the right side of the track there where no one's at. But, they, uh, they hit one. They did. One of the tires hit uh, one spectator a couple of years yeah. ago, right? Well, even before that. Was that was at Phoenix. And, well, well you know, that doesn't bad count. And that was a dragster. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, that was a bad situation I, there. You know, I'm relegated to sitting in the stands sometimes, and uh, we were sitting. What, you? Yeah, in the every once in a while. Well, yeah, that's, that's normal people. Well, wow. Well, well, how does that qualify with you? Uh, never mind. Um, oh. Whoa. But well, I was sitting across from the big screen. <laughs> And two funny cars in a row had gone down and blew their tires about the three-quarter point. That was when they were still running quarter mile. And we got hit with shrapnel from the bodies and the tires. And I was up about probably four or five rows up. So that's not something that hasn't happened before, but it's something that's happening more and more now with the bodies coming apart. And Cruz was saying, that, or uh, Tony was saying, when he drove for... Uh, John Forrest. If he popped the body off, eh, no big deal. John had 10 more back in the shop and he put them back on. Well, now it's coming out of his pocket. So he was quite upset about that because they're on a shoestring budget anyway. And he and Cruz, California kids living in Indiana, that's a little culture shock for them. Yeah, well, they got a nice shop back there and they work together. And, uh, you know, Tony is, they've both been world champions. But Tony yeah. struggled the last couple of years with tune ups or, you know, crew guys or, you know, big thing over there is budgeting. And, you yeah. know, Cruz is doing good, got a good st- uh, sponsor with Snap On. He's been helping his brother Tony out. So that that's a good family thing there. Yeah, both Tony and, uh, and Cruz have been championships. And one of the things that happened is they are the first brother duo to actually have to race each other. Other. And in uh, the 1992 race, uh, it was the, the championships. They were back there side by side. Then we talked to Bernstein. Bernstein's also, uh, he and his dad are the only two father-son team to win at the same race in two different categories. Huh. Yeah, uh, Brandon and A Fuel and Jerry Darian's car. Yeah. And then his father in the top fuel car. Yeah. So that that was good. We talked to Camps about his funny car fun and uh, and so forth, as you did. He'll be back up at the March meet. Jack Beckman's going to be up there, too, but he's going to be watching. He uh, Well, he, we've seen him drive. Yes, we have. Yeah. As, as a matter of fact, uh, they've seen a lot of him drive from the rear. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we're that, looking for uh, Lucky and Diana might to be in the final together. That'd be a yeah. first. Huh? Uh, no, wine. thank you. Yeah. No, <laughs> thank you. No, I know yeah. better. Tara, have you ever had to race a significant other uh, or uh, somebody? You know, uh, you're at, when you're out racing and you're a dragster. Um, actually, my fiance Chris Graves, um, partner with the photography. Um, this year, our car we're putting a blower on it, 671 blower. Um, I drove an in- it was injected last year, um, but we'll actually actually be racing each other in the same class for the first time in the Southwest Heritage Racing. Oh, you know, same Texas, class, so, so you will be coming up mm-hmm. up against yeah, each other. And super excited for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chris, uh, let me give you a little advice on that. Uh, lose. Uh, lose. <coughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Never hear the end of it, huh? <laughs> and Just hey, Bob. Uh, yes. great, uh, great stuff for great Thanks. American auto scene today. Yeah, that's it. We had fun at the Winter Nationals. It's going to be great. March meet coming up. We're all going to be there. You're going to be there in the tower when I'm not. I get to escape when you come up. That's a good thing. I know. The only problem is you always take all the food with you, so there's That's nothing not. up there to well, eat. Well, and, 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 and all the graph, yeah. you know, the t-shirts and things like yeah, that. We grab the, the wine up there. The, the bottle no, of no, wine. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I take the wine. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, speaking of wine, if you've ever heard the wine of an electric engine going down the track, <laughs> good, good, then good transition. You know what electric race cars are all about, and we've got a gentleman on the line. 
line, like to welcome Michael. Michael, you like to be called T Rex, don't you? That's my middle name. Well, T Rex it is, and T Rex, we'd like want to thank you for being on Speed Scene Live. And uh, I understand that uh, you have I've, I've met you in the past before, but you have quite a history with electric yeah. drag cars. <laughs> yes, I have uh, built three world record setting electric drag cars, and they're all. Well, the 27 T bucket isn't street legal yet, but the other two are street legal. Uh, the blue car, which you just showed. Now, what kind of a car? A daily driver. What kind of a car is this blue car? It looks like a 65 Shelby Daytona, which I can say without violating trademark. Oh yes. <laughs> okay, so it's it's uh, a <laughs> it's a uh, it's a very good looking car, and if people. <laughs> Uh, sometimes get upset about modifying a Shelby Cobra. You could say, "Oh no, we did not. Mo- no Shelby Cobras were hurt in the construction of this car." That's a fact. Yes. Now, how fast is this car going the quarter mile? Because I've seen some great footage, and it looks like you're really going pretty good. Uh, right now, we haven't. We don't have a quarter mile track down in San Diego. Last time we raced it, we did a twelve four. But with the time we were halfway down the track. We had run out of gear, you know, because we were set up for our eight-mile runs. Um, so with quarter-mile gears, would be right at the 12s, and then uh, we also just took almost 100 pounds out of the car. So you're running at Barona down in uh, down near San Diego now. That's our main track, yeah. That's right. Now, uh, you've got the volume on your computer up in the background. Please turn that down because one of us is going to get confused, and it'll probably be me. <laughs> hey, uh, now, you were recently trying to get together a, a project, put together a project, the funds, the construction, the parts, to create the very first 200-mile-per-hour electric Indy car. Tell us a little bit about that project. Well, it seemed like a perfect alignment. Uh, we had an arrangement with the track. We knew where we could get some just retired Indy bodies fairly affordably. And uh, because we've been doing this for six years, we've had good relationships with all of the you know, battery and electric motor people. Unfortunately, one of our key people died while we were in the middle of the campaign, and that really really hurt our ability to kind of follow through on the phone calls and everything uh, else. No, that's horrible. He wasn't electrocuted, was he? No. No. That would have at least made a good story. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Hey, so, uh, you know, developing something like this, can you tell us a little bit about what's inside? What makes it go? What's the battery set up? Where are, is it four-wheel drive motors? or How does the whole thing work? Well, you know, drag racing the front two wheels on the ground, so we certainly are only rear wheel drive. Uh, we've got a motor in there that puts out over a thousand foot pounds of torque off the line. Wow! Wow! Direct, yeah, we're doing direct drive because uh, it's both my daily driver and my dragster. It's just my dragster. We'd be running uh, a drag racing. Uh, Transmission, but it turns out those drag racing transmissions overheat after about five minutes. Oh, which oh. they don't care for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Uh, five minutes is an extremely long run. Yes, uh, our first battery pack was uh, built out of the wall 36 volt tool batteries that we bought on eBay. Took apart from the garage while listening to music and telling stories uh, after we set our first. Two world records in both the eighth mile and quarter mile. We got uh, the ability for the manufacturer to allow us to buy their batteries. Wait a minute, you just said DeWalt tool batteries. Yes, the 36 volt, uh, like one horsepower. Like the yeah, like the ones at Home Depot? <laughs> <laughs> the ones where you plug into the back of your sawzall? <laughs> That's the one. Wow. How many do you use? We used 92 of them uh, originally. <laughs> wow. Wow. I can see you Those plugging them all in. Those were then put into our Model T, which we built in six weeks from a frame without proper uh, mounting toys. Oh. Wow, man. I'll talk about hot rod ingenuity. Shocking. 
Yeah. <laughs> They're all poor in Wyoming. You want to get anywhere, you know, you got to figure out how to build stuff. That's right. When you're a pioneer, you know, you're out in the front, but uh, sometimes when you're a pioneer, you get a butt full of arrows, too. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, what's the, what's the reaction when you take a car like this to the track and say, I want to race my electric car? Do You know, when you go into tech and they say, uh, okay, where's your fuel gas tank or, you know. Yeah, fuel shut off. Yeah. yeah what, 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 what's the reaction of the tech guy? Well, because the car is so clean and clearly not just, you know, a jury rigged piece of um, ingenued uh, stuff like they have to deal with, they just pretty much say, okay. <laughs> All right, now we're showing a Cobra Roadster on track right now. Is that also electrified? Yes. Uh, that one still holds uh, records for uh, prototypes. Wow. That's amazing, and it's interesting, too. You can sort of hear in the background for our viewers, when you accelerate, there's a whine from the motor, but what you're mainly hearing is tires and nothing else. Yeah, yeah. The motors we're using don't really whine very much, but the tires, I mean, when we were uh, trying to do some exhibition at the Long Beach Grand Prix, we weren't getting enough smoke, and it turned out that our rear end was off the ground enough that you're getting air and not enough traction. Wow. It was a really high pitch whine. <laughs> yeah, the tires probably doing close to 200 miles an hour and we weren't moving. So you're using the DeWalt batteries in the T. Are you also using them in the two Cobras? No, in the Cobra, one of the Cobras, we bought the A123 batteries direct from the manufacturer and then the uh, Roadster, we got the uh, A1 batteries out of uh, Las Vegas. You're familiar with the K1 battery, right, Bob? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Use it on your pacemaker. Just saying. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Just saying. Yeah, but I've got that dial so I can, you know... Tone it up. down. Yeah, yeah raise it <laughs> up. Or tune it up yeah. when you're yeah, going to yeah. interview, you know, yeah. like John Forrest or something. Yeah. <laughs> with, so, with a steel well, photographer. Well, don't catch fire or explode, so if you're going to have a battery in your pacemaker, I like that. <laughs> So, so now the indie car is on hold. Is is are you going to stop the project, or is it just on hold for a short period of time until your group can regroup? Um, right now we're hustling on getting the blue Cobra ready for this racing season. Uh, we do have some people who we have been talking to about sponsoring it if they come through. Uh, we could get it in the track in two months is uh, the answer. Now, if you create a 200-mile-per-hour electric Indy car, you've, if you've got the vehicle, it works, everything's great, w- who will let you race it? <laughs> I mean, uh, can, we had made arrangements with the Long Beach Grand Prix. So oh. They're going to let us really full blast after, you know, uh, of how, course, just doing a tech inspection. How many laps can you go? Ah. Well, they'll only let us do exhibition for like three laps, so it really doesn't matter. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Can't you put the Racing thing down on the track? If you want to win, can you put the thing down on the track like the slot cars? cars? Yeah, <laughs> and do it that way. Yeah. Or drive through the city of Long Beach and just follow the electric bus line. You're yeah, gonna have to have are. a heck of an extension cord, man. You would, huh? Jeez. Man, well, you know, I think you should get sponsored by the uh, DeWalt Company. That would be a great sponsor. No kidding. Or yes, uh, I think they might not want to promote the uh, hillbilly use of some of their products. <laughs> <laughs> Any plans for an electric boat in the near future? Uh, we actually have worked with uh, a Wakeport boat company that has both electric and hybrid epic boats. Um they recently moved their operation to the East Coast. Hmm. Wow. Uh, real, real good. Uh, I'm told that it picked up a little bit better, and uh, the gas mileage improvement on the hybrid was incredible. I mean, I'm not allowed to talk about it, but, uh, you know, your pocketbook would be going down by less than half. Well, it's, it's great talking to you. What's a website people can go to to see more information on what you're doing? S is in speed, S is in speed, 
I is in IndyRacing.com. Hey, thank you very much, T-Rex. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Hey, maybe I'll see you this uh, year at the uh, Long Beach Grand Prix. I'll be out there again with the Cars for Kids organization or, or the uh, Racers Who Care organization. Oops, my bad. Sorry Oops. about that. And okay. So I hope to see you there. Me too. Me too. Yeah, well, how, what do you think about that, Tara? Have you ever seen uh, electric golf cars out there uh, at the track? Oh, golf cars, of well, golfer, course. Yeah, but yeah, yeah um, never seen an electric car. It's very intriguing. I can, I can see it as a front motor dragster, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a new junior class, you know. Yeah. You, you know, you have the 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 ten to wall battery class, the twenty yeah. to wall. Yeah. <laughs> now, Terry, let, let's uh, we we've been jumping all over tonight, but let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, tell us a little bit about A Fuel and y- your history with the A Fuel class. Well, my uncle Rob um, Wendland is a crew chief for Johnny Gray's uh, Natural Funny Car. Oh. Um, he actually drove a two car team, the In and Out Dragster with Melanie Troxel Troc- back in the 90s. And I grew up watching him and he was really my inspiration um, and then I had the opportunity to work with a guy named Daryl Hitchman who owned an A-Fuel car from California and then moved to Texas um, I was always hanging around in the pits wanting to help and I earned my keep I cleaned a lot of oil pans and uh, <laughs> always a wonderful fi- job finally got in there and he let me uh, do the bottom end a couple of times I got the chance to go to the Gator National Nationals and Indy, uh, which was very cool. Um, but yeah, he really um, gave me the opportunity to go out and travel and really get down in there and learn about the motor and stuff. Is so. this your car we're seeing right now? On yeah, stage? this is actually, it looks like um, Bowling Green, the final round. And you won this round, correct? Yes, I did. How it, fast did you go? Um, I think that run, it was a 7.46. Uh, we won on a whole shot. It had a 003 light, and the margin wow. of victory was 007. Oh, so that's it sweet. was it was really cool. If you look on this video right at the end, you can see the guy. I mean... Oh, this gives me goosebumps. This race was just so awesome. But it rained. Um, I guess at Bowling Green it rains all the time there. But um, we got to run at night. And, man, with all those people in the stands, it was just... The, the great Definitely. thing about Bowling Green is when it rains, nobody goes home. They all stay in the stands yeah. and wait. Well, that's because they're cooling down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they got a cover over the grandstand. Yeah. Now, what class was this that you won? Uh, this is Junior Fuel. Junior Fuel. Now you wow. are transitioning up to 70 Pro. You're going to go a little faster now. Right. Um, Daryl Walden, uh, the o- owner of this car, uh, gave me the opportunity to drive this car last year. Um, I cannot thank him enough for giving me the opportunity and believing in me. Um, We're stepping it up to a blower. I'm super excited to be going faster. Um, This car is a Nealon Parks from wheel to wheel, um, 225 inches, 383 small block power glide. Um, It's it's fun to drive, man. It's I drove a super comp uh, rear engine car, and this car is just a totally different animal. I love it. Well, Neil and Parks, they they cut their teeth on Junior Fuel and A Fuel Mm -hmm. chassis, so they're they're definitely the guy they had. They were the guys to beat there for a couple of years. Well, they're still building a lot of nostalgia top fuel cars out there. Great chassis builders out there. Right, Scott actually drove this car the year before I hopped in it. So well, he, it was sorted out by the right guy. Then. Yeah, he actually uh, went to the finals the year before that in Junior Fuel, and then I ended up winning it last year. So. Now, you, you didn't just step into these cars. You started out in the Junior Dragster ranks. Right. I started racing when I was eight, so this will be my 15th year behind the seat of a wow. Dragster. So. Oh, my that gosh. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and no sponsors, right? You're actually currently looking for a yes. uh, company to sponsor you? We are seeking uh, marketing partnerships for the 2013-14 uh, season. Um, we're about to launch a website, um, but you can visit uh, the uh, association that we race with, SHRARacing.com, to keep up with this year. And hopefully we'll be able to make it to the reunion. Um, we're seeking sponsors for traveling to Bowling Green and 
the reunion this year. So. Now, this was a great in-car footage, but you don't have any footage of you getting out of the car going, I won! I won! <laughs> Actually, um, I'm about to post a video on YouTube of the deleted scene from that video. Um, <laughs> oh, that sounds good. Yeah, I like those. the sound. Yeah. The outtakes yeah. from Bowling yeah. Green. Yeah. yeah it was, <laughs> it was <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. My, different my, kind of video. I always go too far. Don't forget yeah. her boyfriend's over there. Fiance. <laughs> not looking I got friendly. Out, no. <laughs> I got out of the car, and I had no idea who won. I didn't see the wind light or anything. I went over and asked the other guy, Ken Hawkins, and he didn't know who won. So we were sitting down there for probably five to ten minutes waiting for the crew guys to get down there. Finally, they told me that I won, and I was just could not believe it. And then I had to wait another ten minutes for um, Daryl and my fiance Chris to come down there, and it was just waterworks. It was mm. and I'll never forget, that's for sure. That's yeah. good. That's well, and what a great place. The Beach Bend track, Bowling Green is such a fantastic facility, and the people are so nice, and it's such a huge event with all those big names, and uh, what a great place for a win like that. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to going back this year. Okay, well, I got a couple questions here. While we run this video, uh, maybe I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, uh, let's see. I got to scroll down. I got these crew updates on uh, the photo.com. And uh, Tara would like to know what kind of camera setup do you use? Now, this is a professional photographer talking to a professional right. photographer. Um, we shoot Nikon. Uh, I have a Nikon D7000 with a 70 uh, to 300 uh, lens on there. So, so wait, seventy to three hundred? Uh huh. Man, two hundred. Sorry, seventy well, to two hundred. Even that though, yeah. that's you, you can stretch a lot of things with a lens like that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And what's uh, what's mounted on the car? Um, on this car? Yeah, or any of the cars you guys shoot for the you know the GoPro style well, yeah, play we, XDs or yeah, whatever. Yeah, we use GoPro cameras, which is on this one. This is actually a car that I got to drive last year. Also, um, Charlie Smith used to run Top Fuel back in the day. That was him walking by. But I got to drive that car at Denton, which is there. But that was a lot of fun, too. Now, uh, uh, this is the Denton track. And do you do most of your racing in Texas? I mean, I know you went to Bowling Green, but primarily are you a Texan racer? Yeah, we um, go to the Motorplex, Denton, a um, couple other tracks. But mostly all of our races are based out of Texas, yeah. Now, you know, you haven't quite worked out the deal where you can, like, for example, you're going to the March meet in a couple weeks to shoot photos. You can't just slide a front-engine dragster in the trailer somewhere and <laughs> shoot some photos, make a pass, you know, you can't pull that off? No, um, actually, my fiancé, Chris, and I, uh, we live in a fifth wheel, and that's how we travel. We have a toy hauler, and the golf cart fits in the back, and then the drive, or Daryl, the car owner, brings the car separately, but... You know, a real racer would leave the golf cart at home and put the dragster in there. <laughs> I know Donnie does that all the time. She could extend Junior the wheelbase. Yeah, she could extend the wheelbase on the golf cart. Put a big electric motor in there. You, you can be a super cart. Nostalgic <laughs> electric. Uh, yeah. Know, or pulling Alex Rogio and, and tow the car with itself. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> Alex has been posting she's on her way back east. They're driving the car back east to get the new motor and they're going to drive it back out. That's insanity. And we're hoping to have footage of that. Alex will be on the show uh, next month. She's coming back. And actually, we have an announcement about Alex. Yes. Alex will now be one of our regular co hosts on the show. Oh, she nice. will be coming in quite often. Often, uh, of course, she, you know she races a lot and she does a lot of different things. So she'll be, uh, she won't be on every week, but hopefully she'll be on as much as possible. And one of the uh, things that she's going to talk about is that motor swap and what it's like to drive from Virginia to California with a 10-second supercharged race car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's out of control, man. <laughs> and it's got air conditioning too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, turn that CD player on and crank yeah. out the AC and, uh, and keep an eye on the gauges, I guess. Yeah, gauges. you know, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> we don't need no stinking gauges. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tara, we've really enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's been a crowded show, a lot going on tonight, so uh, I hope we got enough uh, time to spend with you. And, of course, Donnie, always a pleasure. Donnie, you're going to be on the Sam Oxer Jr. radio show next Monday. And uh, I did actually get a couple questions on the photo.com. People want to know how you got your start in drag racing. Uh, you know, you were talking about the problems with the oil downs and stuff. They wanted to have some of your input on that. So uh, 
maybe we'll have to get on that, get into that on Sam's show. Yeah, we can do that. I guess it's, what is it, a two-hour show, and you're on it for a you know. half hour. Half hour. Half just, hour. Yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, a lightweight. You know, it I mean, you're on in Australia, like you're uh, on in back east. Don't I forget my... Track. Where am I supposed to go? What studio? Don't forget my Drag <laughs> Illustrated column Jeez. every month in Drag Illustrated magazine. Check out the Sportsman Spotlight, and uh, I do all this for you, the viewers. See, that's wow. why you have good sponsorship oh. for all the, the race yeah. cars. Shh. Just, no, I don't know. I'm just saying, look, you got to keep... <laughs> <laughs> Visibility is important. Lucky's a good example of that. There I go. I th- Hard I work. Works. It's all that work ethic. Right, Donnie? Well, I'm still trying to get over the guy said his main guy for the Indy car died. And you're making a joke out of it. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> electrocuted. <laughs> you know, thinking the poor guy might have been his dad. You know, he's probably in shock right now. You know, we all got to go, you right? say in shock? shock. Oh, oh, no. No. Oh, now see, that's there really you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No pun intended. Hey. Yeah. Don't crowd. Don't that, crowd. That, use, that, a, <laughs> use a pun, go to prison. Uh, <laughs> that really hurts. <laughs> hurts rents oh. cars. Hurts rents cars. You know, we're all, we all got to die, and it's not how you die that's important. It's how you live and spend your time at the racetrack every possible moment you can, whether you're a spectator or a racer. Go out, see some drag racing, off-road racing, indie racing, whatever it is you love to, and you're passionate about. Enjoy your time while you're here on Earth at the racetrack. Well done. Hey, Hot Rod Bob, good yep. to see you in studio again. Thank you. You too, Donnie. Couch? Well, we'll be in Phoenix this weekend for Speed Scene Live. Working on interviews. your tan, huh? Yep. Yeah, working With, on the tan. Movie cameras, not still photography. Uh, some people. Oh, 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 man. Hey, thanks everybody for watching. Oh. Tara, thanks so much for coming Thank you in. For having me. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. All right. Coming up next, All Torque TV, direct from Australia. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to check out our archives page, and of course, the YouTube channel. There's a ton uh, of videos going way, way back, so you can check that out, too. Uh, from all of us at Speed Scene Live, Live. Hey, again, thanks for joining us. We'll be back a week from now right here at SpeedScenelive.com. Speed Scene Live TV, the number one online motorsports TV show. Brought to you by Curry Racing Rear End, MH Tires, and TheFoat.com.